I recently purchased the Film Vision Pro film emulation pipeline by Sir, and what I noticed in the tutorial video is that Sir was going over the the workflow for DaVinci Resolve, obviously with the Power Grades, and also the Premiere Pro workflow, but he didn't cover the Final Cut Pro workflow, and I did see a couple comments asking for it, so I figured I'd help fill the gap since I am a Final Cut Pro user. Let's get right into the video. Me and my buddy Cameron just hung out the other day, and we just brought my camera and shot a bunch of random vlog footage, so I just wanted to let you guys know this is is nothing groundbreaking. This footage is not that great, but it's going to demonstrate how we can use Film Vision Pro in Final Cut Pro, which is what you came here for. So let's first start off with this one clip here, or you know what? Let's actually go daylight first. The first thing I do is drag an adjustment layer above my clip that I want to color grade. I found these on YouTube a long time ago. They're literally just different length titles, so you can find these fairly easily online. And uh, yeah, I just I put it above the clip because I don't want to work destructively. If I want to toggle it on and off, I can easily just press V on my keyboard and toggle it on and off. It's really that simple. The next thing I do is go over to effects and I just type in custom light and you just want to drag two of these onto your adjustment layer or your clip and that's it. And then you want to name one conversion. In this case, it's actually going to be a negative print or negative. Uh, yeah, I think it's called a negative, whatever, doesn't matter. So we're going to have negative and then we're going to have print. So the negative is actually going to work as a conversion LUT. So right here, I'm just going to type in conversion LUT like that so I know what it is. And that's pretty much how it's going to work. Another thing I do is I kind of just set up my exposure and my white balance adjustments ahead of time. So what we're going to do here is we are just going to add a, you can actually add a color wheel here, um, but what I like to do instead is I actually add a color adjustment and you're going to see why in a second. So we're just gonna drag that above everything. And this is going to be like an exposure boost. So I just type in exposure boost plus white balance offset or white balance, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then the next thing I do is I add a color, uh, what is it, a color board, and that's it. So this is going to be my main exposure adjustment. So I drag that above everything. All of the main adjustments I'm doing are before the conversion, and that's so you can maximize your dynamic range. If you were to do everything after, your colors are just not going to look as good, plain and simple. So. That's pretty much it for that. This is going to be my exposure adjustment. You can apply saturation in two different ways. You can either use the exposure adjustment, which is just a color board, or you can use the color adjustments, which is now exposure boost plus white balance for me because I renamed it. So if you want to, again, you can use either or, but I like to use something called density. And there's a creator, his name is Eric Lenz, and he has a density plugin that you can actually download. This is optional, obviously, but I just think density looks way better than just traditional saturation. That's really it. And then I usually save this as a preset after I'm done so I can, you know, just keep adding it and not have to redo this whole, you know, workflow again. Film Vision Pro includes a lot of negative and print LUTs, so you don't want to have to manually select those every time. So let's install them in Final Cut Pro. So when you're on your desktop here, you just want to go up to Go, hold in option and you're going to see library. You wanna click on that. Once you're in library, you wanna click on application support and then find pro apps. And then under pro apps, you're going to see custom LUTs and you basically just want to make a folder for Film Vision Pro. So right click, create new folder. Now I put an A in front of mine because I want it to show at the very top. That's a little trick for you guys. So anything that has an A is going to come first, obviously, since it's in alphabetical order. So I just put that first, so it just shows up at the top for me. Again, you don't have to do that. But once you're in here, you just want to go to your Film Vision Pro download and find the Premiere Pro Final Cut Pro other folder, and you just want to copy these into this folder. That's it. Now you can also just copy this entire folder in here if you feel like it. First, we want to focus on negative because that's going to act as a conversion LUT for us, and that's always going to come first. So once you go to negative, you just want to find the camera that you shot this with, and in my case, I'm using a Lumix S5 II, which is V-Log, so we just wanna go find that V-Log. So there's a ton of different negatives for each camera profile. The one I like to use the most is actually the 500T. I just think it looks really nice, so I'm going to click 500T. So we've set our negative, now we're ready to go to the print, so we wanna set our print. So this is basically going to determine how we adjust our colors. So let's just pick a random print. I'm gonna stick with the first option. There's a bunch of looks too that you can go with. Let's actually try one just to show you and they're kind of already like ready to go. You just have to make some minor exposure and saturation adjustments and maybe adjustments to your white balance. But in this case, I'm just going to use the standard prints because I like them a lot. So we'll go with the first option here. Now it's not going to look very good yet. We're going to head to density now or saturation if you're using saturation and I'm going to pump a bunch of color into this. So now that my density is set where I want it, I'm gonna head over to exposure and you can always do this in any order you want. Um, I think exposure is usually the first thing you want to change, but I'm just kind of weird like that. So 
Um, anyway, I'm just making some minor adjustments to my midtones. My highlights can go down ever so slightly. I don't want to like, you know, I don't want them to be down here. You can look at your RGB overlay here if you if you want, or you can use a parade. Sometimes I like using the parades actually, so I'll keep it there. You got your vector scope for skin tones if you if you want to make sure your skin tones are you know properly set. This day was definitely you know the sun was setting and it was going down, so you want to keep that in mind um, for choosing kind of like what style you're going for. So once I mess with the exposure adjustments, I go to my color adjustments now and I pump a little contrast into the image, not too much. You don't want to go crazy. And then I tend to mess with the highlights and the black point. I raise it a little bit. The shadows I raise a little bit. And then here is where we can actually add a little bit more saturation if we feel like it. I don't want to add too much, obviously, but this is where I make a lot of my final kind of adjustments. And then I raise the contrast a little bit more there. Again, you don't want to go too crazy. Usually the highlights I bring down quite a bit. And then I typically add a little bit more warmth to my midtones for a shot like this. So I'll probably do something like that. And that's kind of like the workflow, guys. It's really that simple. To top off the look, I usually add film grain and halation. So halation, halation. <laughs> anyway, so let's add that here. So I have a like a free plugin I found on YouTube. Again, you can just type in halation for Final Cut Pro. You're, you're going to see the video for this. It's the first one that pops up pretty much. And I just add this as well. So I usually do film grain, then the halation. And I don't go crazy with the halation just because it's like easy for it to look like plain out shit. For the halation, I usually just turn down the blur amount. And then for film grain, I set that to realistic grain. And I usually set it to around 40, 35 to 40, I would say. Maybe 30, actually. I don't set it that high. It depends on the clip. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And then the blur amount, again, I just usually take that down quite a bit. I only like it to be subtle. I don't like this to be pumped up like this. So I actually have a preset that I've made. So I'm gonna drag this out of the way and I'm gonna show you guys my exact color because I make a lot of changes and I spend too much time on this computer doing this. So I'm gonna show you guys my actual look. All right, we're gonna quickly go through these now. So I'm just gonna throw my look on here again and right there, look at that. Now all I have to do is just apply adjustment layers above everything, throw my base grade on it since it's already saved for me and it looks so good, so quick. And we'll do the same thing with this one. Throw that base grade on there. Again, saving this preset saves you so much time. I actually added a vibrance and saturation adjustment. I forgot to tell you guys that, but um, again, you guys get the point. Now this was challenging because it went from daylight to basically darkness immediately because the train was passing my friend and it got dark really quick. So for this one, I'll just kind of go to the darker spot. That's pretty much it. And then the white balance needs to be adjusted. It's a little too cool for my taste. So something like that looks pretty good. And then for color density, I'll probably go a little crazier with it. That looks pretty good. See what that looks like. So that's fine. It's, it's a dark shot, you know, you can't do anything about it. And again, if you don't like it, you can just go into your creative light, which is also the print. I know I just renamed things on you guys, so I don't want to confuse the shit out of you, but this is the negative. And then this would be the print. Normally I'll just pick a spot that I like in the frame and I'll just go messing with the different looks and see which one I like the most. Again, they all give you different vibes. So pick a vibe, you know? That is how I use Film Vision Pro in Final Cut Pro. If you guys enjoyed the video, hopefully that deserved a subscription and a like. If not, totally okay. Um, I just wanted to help the community out. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. That's a cheesy thing to say. It's all good though. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>